Hey there, so I found this video and something about it grabbed me. It doesn't have a lot of views, there's absolutely no reason for me to respond to it, but to be fair that goes for a lot of the stuff I respond to on this channel. But I found the arguments amusingly, um, well, amusing. That sentence went wrong somewhere in the middle, I don't know what happened. It's one of those days, okay, just leave me alone. Proof that God exists? Assalamu alaikum, peace and blessings be upon you, I hope you have been well. Hmm, uh, yeah, yeah, I've been alright. Um, I didn't get hit by a car, um, I ate some food relatively recently. All in all, pretty good. Do we have proof that God exists? Are you, are you asking me? Um, no? Or maybe yes, I, I guess I haven't seen your video, all the way through, at least. Is our proof good enough? Well, if it is in fact proof, then it must be good enough, right? Otherwise it's not proof. Yes, God does exist. Oh, okay. Glad we cleared that up. Now, I know that's a bold claim, and of course, this is a huge topic that I will not be able to tackle in a video less than 10 hours. I'd watch it, and unfortunately, that's not a joke. I probably actually would watch that. I don't know why I do the things I do. I just do them. But anyway, if you do make that video, could you do me a favor and just cut out the background music. It makes it really hard to hear what you're actually saying, and also it sounds kind of like you're trying to sell me, like, environmentally friendly plant pots. So, the simple thing that hit me the other day is, look, we believe in gravity, right? It's all around us. Whether we want to deny it or not, gravity exists. Well, that word exists is a little bit tricky in this particular context, but yeah, gravity is a phenomenon. And we know this because... why? You tell me. If you're going to treat belief in gravity as analogous to belief in God, then you should go over the reasons for believing each of these different things. The basis in evidence and arguments, at least sort of on a broad layman level, for why people believe each one and why they believe what they believe about each one. That's going to be important to nail down early because already I can see your argument is going to be, you can't see gravity but you know it exists, and you can't see God but you should know he exists too. Which is only actually true if the reasons for believing in each of these things things are fundamentally similar and if they're equally well evidenced, which I find pretty hard to believe, but go ahead, convince me. If, for instance, I take, I don't know, this cream here, and I say to this cream, you will stay up when I drop you, it's not going to work, right? I cannot bend gravity to my will. Right, so we have direct observational evidence of a phenomenon. Every time that anyone's ever dropped an object, at least close to a large body of mass like the Earth, it's gone down, unless it's undergoing powered flight, in which case it still goes down eventually, or if it's surrounded by something denser than itself, like a helium balloon surrounded by air, or an air-filled balloon surrounded by water. So we have a very clear phenomenon, we can reproduce it time and time again, and for us to understand what's happening here, this requires some sort of an explanation. Now, let's say the two people are arguing about what that explanation should be. They both have different ideas, but they both refer to this phenomenon as gravity, by which they just mean the tendency of things to go down towards the Earth. One of these people says, well, I think this phenomenon of gravity of things going down is caused by space-time curvature, and proceeds to expound for hours upon Einstein's general theory of relativity and all the reasoning behind it. And once he's done, the other person says, mm hmm well, that's very interesting. Um, I believe it's caused by angels grabbing objects and dragging them down to Earth because they don't want us ascending to heaven. And my reason is, I have faith. All this relativity stuff, that's satanic garbage. Now what would you do in this situation? How would you decide who's right, if either of them? It is a force all around us that controls our lives. We can't see it because we're human beings, and that's the first thing along your road to believing in God. I think most people are already aware that they can't see gravity as though it's a physical object. Is anyone confused about that? That there are phenomena that aren't directly visible? That you can't see laws of motion, only the moving object itself? You can't see a force, only the effects of the force? Acceleration, velocity, centrifugal force, electromagnetism? We get it, these things aren't visible as such. Not directly, you can't describe the shape and color of acceleration. And people know that, you're not going to blow their minds by pointing it out. And it's not the first step to believing in God any more than it's the first step to believing any other explanation for any other thing without evidence. Belief in, say, the electromagnetic force is
is not the first step to believing in the law of attraction from the book The Secret. Just because both of these things are supposedly omnipresent rules of the universe and not visible. No, the quality of an explanation, the likelihood of a proposed phenomenon, is not equal to all others just because no phenomenon in and of itself is visible to the eye. You can't just say, well, here's another thing that you can't see, so that's the first step to believing my thing that you can't see. No, you have to actually demonstrate your thing. We're going to have to look at the quality of reasoning behind your explanation, how well it suits observed natural phenomena. For example, the angels pulling things down explanation, if it didn't seem silly from the start, will start to seem increasingly silly once you start looking at things like gravitational lensing and orbits and so forth. At the very least, compared to general relativity, it seems extremely overcomplicated, and the reasoning itself seems very much like fantastical, wishful thinking. But that's the angels thing, not your Thing. I'm sure your thing is just great. You have to understand how limited we are in our perceptions. I do. That's what science is for. It's to give us a tool to overcome the limits of our perception. And on a lot of fronts, I'd say it's done a pretty good job. And that's why we tend to say if there's some idea that's outside the limits of our perception, we wait for scientific evidence to roll in to establish that that is in fact the case, or at least very likely, before we start going and doing things like believing it. Now your god idea not only appears to be outside the limits of our perception, it appears to be downright unfalsifiable as a claim, putting it even outside the limits of scientific inquiry. So I don't know how you propose to establish the truth of it, but certainly not in any way that's comparable with gravity, because gravity is something that can be studied scientifically, which is why I was trying to kind of point out to you that I don't think it's a very good analogy for god. I mean, even animals perceive things that we cannot as human beings. And we always think of ourselves as like greater than them or, you know, that they don't have as much brain power as we do. But we don't have as much instinct as they do either, right? No, I don't think that is right. I mean, for one thing, how do you quantify instinct? That's kind of a weird thing to imply would even be possible. But at least in terms of the basic instincts of, say, I don't know, point to a dog, we have most of the same instincts as a dog. I mean, okay, we don't walk around in public sniffing people's butts uninvited. At least not most of us. And if you do, shame on you. You know who you are, Phil. But what about the rest? The instinct to find food, to find water, to find a mate, to avoid freezing to death or dying of heat stroke, to care for the young. In fact, we probably have that instinct stronger than dogs do. To defend our pack. And again, we might even have that instinct stronger than they do. Certainly it applies in a much broader range of circumstances. I don't actually know what instincts you're talking about. I mean, you brought up senses before you said instincts, and yeah, dogs, for example, have stronger hearing and stronger smell than we do. And some animals have senses that differ in kind from what we have, not just in degree, but this is a very different thing from instinct. And I know that this doesn't have much to do with the actual point of what you're getting to, but still. For example, and I found this so fascinating I wanted to share it with you, mosquitoes follow the scent of exhaled carbon dioxide to find their next blood meal. So mosquitoes have a sense of smell, and we have a sense of smell, but our different species prioritize the things that are useful to our species. What are you actually trying to get at here? Are you seriously still just on the point that there are some things that we can't see or smell directly? I know, but we can still detect their presence in some way. And if we can't, we have no business believing in them. That doesn't help me believe in your god. Why are you telling me this? In fact, since this is going to be the same thing over and over again, let me just fast forward. And so many more that it would make this video ridiculously long. It already is. But think about yourself in this context. You only have your five senses, and we can't do anything as cool as some of those animals. Uh, yeah, we can. We can do every single thing those animals can do. How do you think we know about those things? We can detect carbon dioxide, like the mosquito. We can hear bat echolocation, like the moth. We can communicate over much longer distances than an elephant, with infrasound if we want to. We can see light outside the visible spectrum, like the finch, or the reindeer. We can see thermal images, like the snake. We can detect the electrical activity within muscles. We can detect the Earth's magnetic field. Now you might say, oh, you can't do this without tools. Well, no, but that's, again, part of the point of science. Devising ways to observe different aspects of reality to establish their reality. All of these things, carbon dioxide, echolocation, infrasonic sound, infrared and ultraviolet light, electromagnetic fields, these were all things that we did not know existed at some point. 
before we had evidence of their existence, before we had tools to detect their existence, before we even had a sound theoretical basis to predict their existence, a person who insisted they existed would be doing it through nothing more than pulling it out of their ass. It would be a thing they just made up with no evidence and no good reasoning behind it. And while if they predicted these specific things, they would have been right, there would be far more chance of them being wrong. Because that's not a reliable way to figure out if something's true. If you start coming up with ideas on that kind of a basis, and just asserting their truth, you're far more likely to get it wrong than to get it right. And if you do get it right, it's just by chance. And now let's say that somebody discovers carbon dioxide long before Einstein. And someone else says, wow, that's fascinating. That's a thing we can't see with our eyes or smell with our noses. So you know what? Penguins communicate by passing notes through quantum entanglement, wormhole, time travel, telepathy. And everybody goes, hold on, hold on. Wh what? It's an interesting idea and all, but what's your reasoning? And he says, well, you can't see carbon dioxide and you can't see this, so really, you've already taken the first step to believing me. I'm sorry, what? Do I even need to explain why that's a terrible, terrible argument? Apparently so, but you know what? The people who are gonna get it already get it, so fuck it. This is why people believe in all that stuff and gravity, but not in your god. Because the way this non-existent person put forth penguin note-passing quantum entanglement wormhole time travel telepathy as a hypothesis is the way you put forth your god hypothesis. And then you pretend like it's valid, like it stands alongside the rest on an equal level. But it doesn't. At least not the way you argue for it, or the way anyone else I've ever seen argues for it. The basis for belief isn't the same. The evidence isn't on the same level. Right? So, the idea that we believe in gravity, though we can't see it, right? We see, we observe its effects. It's a force that affects us that we can't really negotiate with, right? We can um, manipulate it once we understand it, but we can't really physically hold gravity. I'm never going to hold gravity, right? Same with God. So we can't physically hold God, but we can manipulate him once we understand him. <laughs> okay, if you demonstrate the effects of God and how you can manipulate God to produce those effects, and you demonstrate what the cause is behind those effects as convincingly as has been done for gravity, then I'll believe in God. But you haven't. You don't. That's why people don't believe you. You want to piggyback off gravity. You want to say, well, gravity, look at gravity. That has credibility, and you can't see that, and you can't negotiate with that, and you can't hold that. <laughs> Therefore, God. No, I'm sorry. The scientific credibility of gravity does not lend one bit of credibility to God. The people who want to put forth that idea are going to have to do the heavy lifting of their own. You can't just hitch a free ride on something else. God is beyond our perception as human beings. And the beautiful thing about it is... Ugh, that music is getting intolerable. We're told multiple times throughout the Quran about our nature, about ourselves, which is why I love Islam so much. Let me just stop here and read that. And mention, when your Lord took from the children of Adam from their loins... Oh, hold on. Am I the only one that finds it incredibly weird when people talk about other people's loins? Maybe that's just my problem. I don't know. But also, here's a weird thing. If you go to Wikipedia and you look up loin, it says the loins are the sides between the lower ribs and pelvis and the lower part of the back. And then it has a butcher's diagram of a cow showing where the loins are. Now, you remember that part of the Quran that people love to make fun of? Surah 86 verses 5 through 7. Now let man but think from what he is created. He is created from a drop emitted, proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. From the loins? I don't know if that's a meaningful connection, but it's a connection. Anyway, he took their descendants from their loins and made them testify of themselves, saying to them, Am I not your Lord? They said, Yes, we have testified. This, lest you should say on the day of resurrection, indeed, we were of this unaware. So just more typical ranting about you better fucking believe me. If you don't believe me, you better get with a fucking program or things are going to get pretty bad for you. Which, by the way, that's another thing people don't usually feel the need to do if they have convincing arguments. But this shit is like half the Quran. And this is why I love Islam so much. Yeah, it's just lovely. Because every piece of advice is from your creator. Well, no, it's from Muhammad, if that, and he says it's from the creator. I could say the same thing about everything I ever say. That doesn't make it true. It's like ignoring the owner's manual to any complex thing that you own. And when it breaks, not going to look for the answers in the owner's manual, but instead to other created things, right? Doesn't make any sense. 
All right, so I have a broken VCR, and I go, man, I sure wish I could find the owner's manual for this thing, or even better, the technical manual. But there doesn't seem to be one. This thing hasn't been made in who knows how long. Can't find one online. So I go on some web forum, and I say, hey, I'm fixing this VCR. Does anyone have the owner's manual for it anywhere? And someone says, oh, yes, brother, of course I do. Here you are. And I go, cool, thanks. And I open it up, and it's just full of a bunch of ranting, like, and when your manufacturer took them from the children of reel-to-reel -reel film, their descendants, and made them testify of themselves, saying to them, am I not your manufacturer? They said, yes, we have played back the video evidence. This, lest you should say on the day of VHS's comeback as a fashionable format, indeed we were of this unaware. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Is this a joke? Does anyone have an actual user manual? And someone says, yeah, ignore that guy. He loves to hand those things out. He's completely full of shit. Here, here's the actual owner's manual. And I open it up, and the first thing I read is, RCA answered, I am the way, the truth, and the player. No one comes to the watching of the videotapes except through me. And I'm starting to get annoyed, so I go back to the forum, and someone sends me some other book with that kind of junk, and then some other book with that kind of junk, and so on and so on. And eventually I go, you know what, guys? Screw you. This is ridiculous. And all of them in unison type in all capital letters, WHY ARE YOU IGNORING THE OWNER'S MANUAL? YOU'RE A BAD PERSON AND I HOPE YOUR VCR MELTS IN HELL. Now the reason I went through all that right now is because I came up with it while I was deciding what to say and it sounded funny to me so I just wanted to, but it's really a pretty bad analogy even still because we know a VCR is manufactured. We know who made it, we know where they made it, we know who designed it, we know the history of the development of the technology. The history of the thing, the origin of the thing, is clear. To deny that VCRs are made by human beings would be absurd, because it goes against everything we know about VCRs. And meanwhile, it's perfectly reasonable to expect that at some point in time any given VCR would have had a user's manual because they're sold with them. Humans are not VCRs. We're not manufactured and then sold with a user's manual for people to ignore. The only thing we have are a bunch of people shoving books in our faces and saying, you were created because I said so. And this is the owner's manual for your body and your mind and your society because I said so. And they all say so, and they all have different books, and those books say so too. I don't see any particular reason to favor any one of those books as the user manual for humanity any more than any other, let alone to assume that there even is one. We have the owner's manual. Yeah, says you and everybody else from a religion with a book. You realize why just saying that doesn't demonstrate the truth of it, right? I'm not ignoring some manual that's obviously and undeniably the correct user's manual for a human being. I'm saying that if it is such a thing, it's certainly not obvious or undeniable. And I'm asking you to convince me that there is such a thing, and that yours is the one. Alright, so somehow despite the fact that this video is only a few minutes long, it seems I have to come back for a part two. I'm doing that thing I do where I take too long to get through stuff. Hopefully at least 12% of it is of some value. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, please before you go, give the video a like and click subscribe if you haven't. Huge thanks to all my Patreon supporters, Subscribestar supporters, PayPal supporters, uh, YouTube members. For early access, sign up to the email list at list.logic.com, and I'll see you next time.